Dun, dun, dun. Right, oh. we are back. Okay, soon you'll see our faces. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> are you ready? I am ready. Oh, it's been swapped around for some reason. I'm Dave. Oh, okay. Interesting. I, I want to talk about my new album. Yeah. <laughs> and my hatred towards Manchester United. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. We're good. We're good now. We're good. Hello, everyone. Hello. And welcome to the Rabbit Hole Show. I'm calling it a podcast. Really, a podcast should be audio, but for some reason, everyone's using their face. So sorry for that. I should have put a warning up. Well, I've got my guest here. His name is Dave. Hello there. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm good. And how are you? Very well. Thank you, my friend. Very well. So what have you been up to? Oh, I'm assuming we're talking musically. Well, no, in general. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> in general, well, it's the usual boring things of life, unfortunately. So there's that. Um, got a new dog. If that's relevant and interesting to anybody, as oh. a little friend to go with our giant, big, white, fluffy Malamute that we have. How do dogs get so, on? Like, like, because you got your old dog. How does the new dog get on with the old dog? This is the element and the good question. Um, Are they like cats? This is because you know um, when uh, when you've got um, <laughs> a new cat there. Yeah, yeah. It sort of changes the formation of the um, other cat. Yes, it does. The it pecking order, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I was wondering if, so we, if it was the same with dogs. Right, it is. But, well, with ours, I, I use ours as an instance at the moment. With <laughs> our old dog, he's just over eight. Mm -hmm. He's 50-something oh, kilos now. So he's a big dog. And being an Alaskan Malamute, so he's pure white. And he's crossed with a husky. So they have not only is he male and has dominant breed, he's an alpha male. So everything says I'm territorial. So that makes things tricky straight away. Yeah. But he's generally quite good with female dogs. So um there was a poor little, it was a show cocker spaniel, female. She's just about a year old, and she was either going to be potentially no home, because we tend to read home dogs from you know where they someone comes after them anymore so we thought i thought do i don't i you know young dog with billy who's the old dog and i thought will this work and i thought well he needs company because he's getting old so I, we took the plunge we tried it it's slowly working but yes he is territorial and he does tell her and we have to be in we can't leave them together no. at the moment but she is she's brilliant submissive lovely no problem whatsoever and we're just hoping slowly slow steps and we can get them to just reasonably get on on his side so we can he can adapt fine and it all goes forward nice and smoothly that's the plan so four days in it's getting better are they getting on now they're a bit it's better. Are they he's chummy? Not, they're chummy they're not that far but he was he slept one side so we've got a stair gate in the middle between the dining room and the kitchen now just to keep them apart because you never know your dogs are wild so you never know so he lays this side of the gate she has laid the other side and he has ignored her that's a big step from part you know compared to the first day where he was very like wanted to kind of go for her and bear in the teeth it was quite <laughs> awful okay there's going to be some issues there but um it is getting better oh good so and it's a good, and she's lovely. And it's either that, or she was going to be moved to another home and another one. She's only one. It's just not fair. So we're going to try our best to make it work. So that's that's the deal there. And how, but yes, they do have that territorial, and just like cats, I guess it is similar. Oh, oh, good. So, um, what's your dog's name? The new. Yeah. So the the new dog is called Coco. Oh, Coco. That's our yeah. one. That was our um my old cat's name. Coco. Oh, was it? Okay, wow, that's great. Well, she was. She already had the name, so um, we thought we're not gonna don't okay. change it. She's used to, used to the name, so we'll leave it. So we got Coco and Billy. That's the two dogs. It's almost like a comedy duo, that isn't it? Coco and Billy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What adventures will they go on? I wonder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some of those kids' early morning TV show. Who's done that on the carpet, Coco? 
Yeah, <laughs> no, it was Billy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, yeah, I know it is. But so yeah, it's, it's so far. Yeah, we, we're managing to make it work. So it's been easier this week because work's been a nightmare with the weather. So that's helped. So that does help. Good weather, eh? Yeah, uh, good British weather, I should say. We're going to do a two-hour conversation on the weather now. People. On the weather. Yeah. Now, this will be people just flying straight off. Right? <laughs> signing off, signing off, signing off. Yeah. It's the uh, British thing, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah. weather is always oh, the first time you... How's the weather today? Yeah, good, thank you. Oh, it's, that, just... it's been that fine rain, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the light drizzle. Yeah, light drizzle. <laughs> you don't get wet in it, apparently. Well, you must do, because it's rain. Yeah. Surely, yes. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. I don't know it? what rain you've been having, but that ain't rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, going out in light drizzle, but I'm actually dry. Well, how's it? it can't be light drizzle then, can it? It's no, just, no. <laughs> oh, it's the British humour again and the sayings, isn't it? I know, we always um, talk about the weather like it's like the most important thing. Everyone says that to me. I've, uh, you know, my partner, like yeah, I've said before, she's um, she's not English, so she says the same thing. Everybody, it's straight away onto the first conversation. Weather, it's the weather. <laughs> and now I'm doing it to you, Charlie. So uh, two Brits are doing weather to each other. I know. So, we're, we're kind of stereotype. We're stereotypes. Yeah. Next, we're going yeah. to talk about different teas and what's the strongest. Oh yeah. <laughs> not only that, what can you dip your biscuit in? Yeah, there you go. Interesting topic. And what type of biscuit? Because there's crummy ones and that will just fall into your tea. Yeah. As soon as you dunk, they're the weak. You know, there's like the weakest biscuits out there. Uh, like like the they're hanging, hanging on for life. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got the tough biscuits where uh, the, the, you can't even break them. No, they're like just putting you have to, you have, them. You have to dip yeah. them in like five times, dip them in yeah. just to get anything. <laughs> it's funny i don't have sugar in my tea but i love biscuits in there oh okay interesting well see I, i'm a half a sugar person which people look at me and they say like, half a sugar i know i just go just gauge it as you please you haven't got to measure it out don't worry i'm not i, I'm not, I haven't got a sort of an issue with it just you know what just I've, half a sugar you know what? i've never heard of half a sugar have I'm you not no nah. no it's okay. like half a sugar Okay, well, this is you then. So this I, is you to you, Charlie. Oh, I, I, have one, I have one teaspoon of sugar or two. Okay. Uh, what about you, Dave? What do you have? Uh, half a sugar. Yeah. Really? Is okay, that, what's ha that? Half a grain. Yeah, half a sugar. Yeah. <laughs> half a sugar. How do, you, how do you work half a sugar out? Well, yeah. I, get, I get a knife and a fork and I cut it in half. Yeah. <laughs> I think by the time the tea's ready, A, it's going to be cold. Yeah. And being that, but that half a sugar could be, I don't know, if they've got sugar cubes of a mighty size and they half one of them, wow, you don't want too many half a sugars in a cup of tea. Well, I, know the I know the little cubes you can get, the sugar cubes. You get the small ones, they're yeah. Quite, they're quite um, rich, aren't they? Yes. So I can I see that being cut in half. Yeah, could be. You'd have to do it with health and safety, though. No fingers being I'm guessing half a spoon... Like teaspoon for you, yeah, is what you mean. Yeah, half a teaspoon. You've got it exactly. Ah, oh, there you brown go. Brown sugar I'm has a... to be brown. Has to be brown sugar though. Why? I just never really like white sugar. There's no, no idea why. You know, you know, there's no um, there's no difference. They're just no, probably. I don't think there is. It's <laughs> slightly, just a little, slight different taste in coffee. I noticed, but that's just me. Made my taste buds. Is that a little bit is that you pretending to be healthy? I do brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll put like, that one by the side and <laughs> like <laughs> like brown bread i only i only have brown bread oh, i do a combination of both i don't mind either brown bread's good especially with ba uh, I, bacon yeah and seeded bread i like seeded bread that's not bad at all is it yeah those seeded loaves and rolls and things you get now quite nice oh, okay. bit of salad could have that now Yes, he's making you hungry. Same here. So I'm gonna go get some food, people. Okay, I'll be yeah. right back now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're making probably everybody hungry. Talking about <laughs> food, cups of tea. At least we've moved away from the weather, though. That I'm, was probably. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a good link now. Link up play. Talking about food, let's go into your music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. The, the important stuff is on the way. 
But I must say, I saw you or met you through SoundClick. Back, yeah. back in the day when um, SoundClick had a, a good forum and you could all yes, interact. Yes. And that's what I think is great about, what well, was great about that site was the interaction. Mm. That's a very good point, Charlie, because I recently went back there. Me too. And, and then I realized how much it's changed. And it's more, how can I put it, uh, more, it's gone a bit more business commercially and less um, interaction with, like the forums were great. I remember the days of the forums and the cult, people did get to know each other. Yeah. And um, nowadays, I don't think that happens so much anymore. It's just spam, spam, you know, my song, my song, my song, my song. And then no one's really listening. I don't think like oh. they used to be. That's maybe my cynical point, And I'm sorry if people get offended by that, but it's just... Um, just no, it's different. It's no, very different. I, I believe interacting with people is the best option for any musician or anyone that wants yeah. to get stuff out there. Just you got, so. you got to start talking to people and actually listen to their stuff and actually have sort of a comment on their music. Yeah, or you have to, or just talk to them. I believe that because you might really hate their music, but they're good people. And you just yeah, want to have also, that interaction. You just need that. Of course that. you do. Of course you do, Charlie. And sometimes, to be honest, even if the music can't, you know, a genre you're interested in, no. it's not something you like, but it you could be really well produced. But you respect that. You respect their yeah. music. Yeah. Exactly. Because it takes time to put these things together. You just, Well, so for some people it does. I, some people go through it very quickly. But I know people who spend weeks and months just for getting one track finished. Exactly. And there's nothing worse. They put it out there and it's completely ignored by even people who know they've done it and it's still ignored. I know. Well, I don't know. You fight a losing battle, I think, sometimes for this. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I've tried. I try and try like everybody else does. But and you, and you're right. Talking to the right people is, the, is a real key. Do you find it a little harder now because you don't have sound click to interact with or is it um, well, after different? That, was, it's different. Um, it's different in one sense. I remember going from SoundClick way, way years ago, then over to MP3 and Sign, as you know of as well. And the um, that's the a, forms that's, there, that's as close as SoundClick that I've had with in the like, old days, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. People actually, there was an interaction there. People got to know each other, mm -hmm. and um, there, you know, people did listen. I mean, you don't know sometimes if someone's done the classic. Yeah, they just read a few comments above and then do their version, but they still spent time there. And the yeah. music may well have been playing in the background. So at least the effort is there. <clears throat> but generally, people there, I find, did have, there's a good group of people who generally do listen and do take interest in people's work. Yeah. And there's they some fantastic, fantastic work there. And some fantastic. And there are some well. unique, the uh, new, unique uh, music out there that yeah, people might go, is. that is bizarre. I don't get it. But there's other sets, mm. you know, I like that. Yeah, of course. That's the beauty of it. Is the individuality of music. Yeah, you all like the same thing. It'd be a very boring old. It would be a boring one. You need different, don't you? Because I must. Be you need that the... odd, odd sort of musician out there that comes out with something. You do. Yeah, of course you do. And I always find it's like, um, like for music itself, it's it's if it's coming from the person, it's individual anyway. So exactly, you get more variety. I mean, I mean, I don't know about yourself. I, I haven't listened to mainstream music for years, a long, long, long time, Charlie. And um, I've, most if I ever listen to anything, it's always indie work, generally, if I, you know, on the websites, as we've mentioned, and things like that, I go and listen, because I just find what they do is generally a lot fresher than what comes from, say, the UK charts. Yeah. Which is, you yeah, know, most of those, if you hear them once on the radio, you can guarantee in two or three or four weeks' time if someone said, do you remember that? It will not be remembered. It's yeah. very overproduced. We know what it is. It's typical English pop, and I don't mean to really have a go at that, but it's just not me, so it's not my thing. No, like you're not saying that like every mainstream oh, no, music no, no. out there is like... Not at all. No, no. no not at all. It all you know, it's, I'm, I'm a big preference to people who actually are using instruments or trying to, or you know, they actually got something they're giving rather than just... A, a sort of a, a makeshift voice gone in the studio because you know with the technology these days you can make a non-singer sound pretty good and yeah. with things like that it's kind of to me it's like okay but two years later that person sort of faded away a little bit because it's like well where's the what's the real deal here what are we really seeing where so i find that difficult but that's me i i just 
It's just the way I am, I guess. But yeah, everyone to their own, though, Charlie, which is the classic thing, isn't it? I know. That's exactly what I'm like. I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not judgmental. No, yeah. I can hear some. I mean, well, it's not for me, but I can, I can respect and appreciate what they've done to get there. Yeah, like... What they, you know, to, to, to play the instrument, do the singing, you know... It, I couldn't sing, so there's no point. I can't be dismissive of that because I couldn't sing a note. So I'd be, it's like, you can't do that. It's, you know, fair play to somebody who can stand up and sing in front of people. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, because you can get snobby people out there. Oh, oh no. Dismiss. I know. Music snobs, isn't it, as they call it? Yeah, even with, um, like, when I do instrumental music with um strings, mm. I, I know there's people out there that go, they don't like virtual instruments. They just don't yes. like it. Oh, I know. They click it straight away. They know. Because it's uh, not, um, it's obviously not authentic and it sort of ruins yeah, it for exactly. people. It ruins it for people that have spent years on playing an instrument mm -hmm. and then someone comes along, just puts a few keys in and there and then just sort of, I can understand that point of view, you know. I can, but I couldn't dismiss it. That's the thing. That's, uh, that's, pay, that's probably their paid work that they do. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. but you can, I, I, I can understand it in both ways. For me, it's a lot easier for me, you know. Yeah, well, I'm the same. So I'm the same boat as you for that, Charlie. It's exactly the same. I, I've been I've restricted to a smaller space than I once had. So well, I haven't got the best of movements in my hands anyway. So no, it's a lot. Of course. It, this is ideal for me to do it this way. And yeah, and that's the. But I do. I, if you can, pl if you can play an in, if you can like, if you got hand movements that are really good, I would mm. say um, try and play an instrument. You know, learn, learn, just... learn, 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 and you know, learn the theory as well. It's just yeah, that's it. That's that's the interesting element because I didn't. Because... I didn't. So no, I haven't. So I'm like you. I haven't. So it takes longer I'm, I'm to not, understand I it, just, all. and even so, I'm not perfect. <laughs> no, well, I just mine was just years and years of practicing, literally years of practicing. I just had a thing. <clears throat> excuse me, I was brought a keyboard at a very young age, and I used to just play it all the time after school. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was probably about eight to nine, and I just played and played and played and played. And as time went on, years go on. Technology obviously comes along. PC comes along. And you start finding new ways to continue that, what is there in a hobby when you're young. So you continue that exactly. along. And then you start finding software that allows, say, to start with samples. So you start constructing. And then you think, OK, that's come to a limit now because there's only so much you can do with loops. So back, going back probably about 18, 17, 18. Then you think, then I started to put, not these keyboards that I'm moving my hands towards. Maybe no one can even see them. So it's probably silly moving my hands there. But the keyboards I had at the time, I would connect them through auxiliary and found out I could play bits in with the loops. Exactly. So slowly, you're starting to bring your own sound into, like, say, some loops that you've got. And then before you know it, a few more, you know, more times gone by, you've got the thing set up how you want it and you're doing everything. Exactly. From top to bottom. Exactly. It's just your brain just adapts. So it's, it's a strange thing to say because some people ask me and I can't explain it properly. It's very difficult to explain. But it just, I think it just naturally sort of comes to certain people if you've got a musical element in, in you somehow, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe someone more equipped can explain that. I, I just, that's how I see it. Where did it all start for you with music, like from the beginning? Um, Was it later on? Or so just early? No. Uh, do you mean like the original was in getting me into making some music as in, or yeah, how, more did, how, the... how did you get into music in general, like composing or playing? Well, that was, um, I think the first things that got me into it was, um, probably initially was the keyboard that mum and dad got me many, many years ago when I was eight. That was the initial start. And then it was, as what, you know, another odd one to some maybe was, when I discovered things like the some of the music from old arcade machines or Commodore Four with its famous SID chip, but nice to hear at a friend's house. Nice to think, how's that music coming out of that computer? Yeah. You know, set the, I, I just it just back. It just amazed me how that came through, and that's obviously how then I got to. Yeah, you know, as you get a bit older, you got to discover like your Chris Hughes What, and, what you know, what's Tower. this magic box? What? What's this magic yeah. is doing? What's this? What's this? <laughs> and at that age, you have no idea. You just—I just remember being in a local computer shop, and the guy was um, 
it was something like um am i i don't know am i allowed to mention game names and stuff i'm assuming it's okay to mention the name of a game i it dare you like, no no go on <laughs> <laughs> it was something like um great diana sisters which you'll probably remember yourself which yeah like a um and i just remember the music in the background and i thought oh it's coming from that you know and it just it surprised me because there was melody there was tune and it was, it was most other things with beeps and still in that type of sound the bleeps and blops and everything else and then just that inspired me from there that fascinated me because it was electronic it was you know every other music you were hearing then was just stuff your parents and family members had on at home this was something different. I think that's what got my got me that, and the, the keyboard the parents got me was what got me into going forward with what I do. I think I think that was the initial part of it. Exactly. So that's I think where it was, Charlie. I think that's exactly where it was. Around that time, so a young eight-ish Dave Meredith. It was. I couldn't tell you what he looked like, what he did, but that was when it was roughly around then. And what um, program did you use back then? Because I, I used a lot of mod trackers and... I had, um, at one point, I didn't have it, but I used to go to a friend's house to use it. Was it Optimod or Optimed? Optimed. Yeah. That, that's a, that was Amiga, though, wasn't it? Right? Was it Amiga? Yeah, I remember Soundtracker back in the day. Yes, I remember Soundtracker. Um, I got to use Optimed a little bit, but not Soundtracker. Yeah, I think Optimed had more tracks or something like that, didn't it? Yeah, and it was, again, I was new to it. So I was like, this, this guy at his house, and he was a guitar player, to be fair, and he was like, and he could read music. So he was putting some sort of synth guitar sounds in through, through Optimed. And I used to sit there and think, wow. And so it's just baffling, you know, when you're young and you think, this is incredible, it's something completely different. Yeah, I felt like a, an evil G, um, scientist sort of, trying to come yeah. up with different sounds which were like completely bonkers but i, I always yeah. used to play around with the you know what frequencies or what um different noises i could make or flanges yeah. or you know you reverb it's experimentation yeah. isn't it which is great you can exp when you start experimenting so it's the same for when i was first doing things i think i was more using the inbuilt sounds and then over time, you start thinking, well, I've heard that sound a lot now. There must be something I can do to it. Like you say, phasers and reverbs and try and change the length of it and shorten it and all these type of things. And it, you suddenly start, you start really, there's a whole world of creativity you can do here. Well, just on one sound, on one sound. It's just like, imagine doing that with a whole load of sound. Yeah, I tried to do, um, what is it, drums with other sounds mm. on the same track because there was only like four, okay. four tracks at the time. So I tried That's to... tricky. Yeah, I always tried to make a song like that, but it was yeah. difficult. It was difficult at the time, but I, you know, it was fun. That's the thing. It was fun. And music should be fun. Yeah. I do believe that. It should be fun. I don't think it should be. It's not a forced thing. It should be just fun. Just enjoy it. You know, no one's going to be masters. Not everyone's going to be a master at an instrument or whatever. But find if you want to go into music and you find an instrument you like, I, I, I believe when you're limited uh, with so, um, software, you're mm. you can be more creative. So you find methods. Yeah, that's a good point. Making it work, kind of like Chris well, Usbeck. Took... Chris Usbeck had to use a, his own tracker to sort of. Yeah, so I, I can imagine. I, I think I see the. I've, I've seen that mentioned on one of your previous interviews, and um, and I think I've read before as well about that. Is there's a lot of work involved. Yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, so I just find it interesting that you, um, like you can get everything now. You can get everything. Mm -hmm. What I like mm -hmm. is not having everything, and I just try and come up with something that will be like a substitute. Yeah, see, that's, but that's the creativity, Charlie. See, that's what's good. Because we've all got budgets. You know, we've all got other things, family, responsibilities, and all the rest. So you can't go too far. But um, I think, I don't know, I guess for myself, I've kind of got what I need with the keyboards because they're keyboard workstation, which is great. And I always use the auxiliary thing. I was using auxiliary, using the keyboard patches and the sounds on the keyboard and then manipulating them later on with software. But um, the last sort of, quite a few, well, a few years now, I can not tell you exactly, I think it's more than 10 now. I sort of, I moved more to sort of, discovered more real-time MIDI. Because I, I play live and record in bars and stages. Oh, so, you, it, so you do play live? So it's kind of live 
into the software, if you see what I mean. So yeah. there's no programming yeah. element. So, yeah. so I'll literally, I've, I've got a drum track, say, ready in slot number one, as you, as you see across your, your software. And then I'll start constructing some melody. Oh, yeah, so I've set the keyboard on, just say, a lead synth or something. And I'll just experiment with a few ideas that sound good, but go good with the drum beat that I've already put there. And then I'll just build from there. So everything is actually played in live at the time. So it might be eight bars, 16 bars, and then build, literally construct the track that way. Or and then, you have it, the drums like on you like a harness. You have a stick, yeah. like a drumstick in your mouth. Yeah. You've got the, <laughs> the keyboard there and you're doing this. You're doing everything. Yeah. Oh, don't talk to me about the drums. <laughs> I, I got some recently because I've always been interested in it. I, oh yeah, I've got a, um, a sort of beginner's set. It's not easy. The coordination between you know, two, your feet and your hands. You're like an octopus. It's, obviously, I haven't got eight legs, but it's just sort of, you know, you're sort of trying to do feet, arms and like this and the, the rhythm and keeping count. I have it bad enough trying to do two. I think two's enough for me as well. I, um, I have tried stuff, it with but... the nose before. <laughs> and how did it go? There's, you know. Did it work? Is there a track in the works? As long as you don't sneeze, then you're, you're good. Perfect, you see. And it could be a track, can it? Um, unusual body part track. So made by the nose. <laughs> yeah. I, imagine I, I'm going to have your window and... uh, the musician that uses every part of his body. And I mean every part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can be open for discussion, that one. <laughs> you can just imagine having your nose and bashing the clip, making a melody on the keyboard. And if anyone walks past, they're going to say, what is he doing? Headbutting the keyboard to a stranger. No, but this guy's gone mad. <laughs> What's going on? It's in the, it's all done for music. All in the name of music would be my answer to that. It's all in, yes. Yeah, all in the name of music. <laughs> Don't judge. Don't judge. Come and listen and then judge. Yeah. <laughs> no judge. I know. Don't like it. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I won't use the nose next time. Any ideas what I could use? No. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a bit, but it's an interesting journey, though, Charlie, and, and one that, for me, it's never-ending. I think you always learn. There's no stopping point. I think you just keep going as long as you can. Even when you're old, you're, just, you're still learning. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. That's the whole point, isn't I'm it? I'm still learning to put a du uh, duvet cover with a duvet. Are you really? Yes, and I hate it. Do you? I hate doing it. Well, especially if it's double sized bed as well, because it's a. I'm all right. I'm six foot odd, so I can reach across the reaching element, but not for everybody. I'm basically a dwarf, so I can't. I, I know. So it's harder for you, much harder, obviously. Yes, but I somehow do it because that's who I am. Yeah, you see, you try, keep trying. That's the thing, isn't it? I do my best. It's in there, it's in the spirit, as they say. Go do it for the for, for the country. Yeah. <laughs> Need perfect. <laughs> Here's another talking of duvets. I hear you've got new projects. Yes, there are new projects. Um, obviously, one new project is the new album that's recently come out. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, I which I'm gonna go onto your website now. Oh, so, lovely. So please tell me why I am um, get onto your um, new. What's the new um, album called? It's called In <clears throat> Indestructible Design. Mm. So it's quite interesting title name. Where did that really... name come from, or was that just spontaneous? It was most of mine. You've uh, spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So I, it's even when I play back tracks when I've recorded them and they're ready. I tend to listen to each one a few times and then just think, okay, that sounds, this name suits that track. And I just, I go with it. Otherwise, I'm sure, you know, you can spend ages going over and over track names and then just end up not going to go in anywhere. You know what? That's, that's my downfall coming up with names. Oh, so you're the opposite. Okay. I cannot think about names. I can do the song, but the name is just... Wow, so that's the tricky bit for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's never, it's not easy. It's, it's, it just seems to get, I just seem to come, I come up with them, but not always. There are times where I go away for a few days and just think, right, I'll leave it alone, come back, and hopefully my brain's filled itself with new ideas. I was, maybe not. I was wondering if we could do this, if you're okay with this, uh, play a part of your one of your songs, and is there one that you recommend? Oh, that's a very good They're question. all good, by the way. But is there one in particular that you're really impressed with? Oh, is that on the newest album we're talking? I'm assuming, Charlie. Yeah, I'm on the newest yeah. album. Um, there's some quite. I don't like. To, I'm not going to blow my own trumpets. I'm not one of those people. It's everybody else to judge for me. So I do that. Um, I do that because I've I've been having coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I well, I'll tell you what, a case in point, although I don't know if you're, because obviously there's one, there's a few on there that, well, a few, there's about four or five, if I remember. I've got to remember now, you're putting my memory to the test. There's Ooh. five, I think, that are my renditions of some previous, like, tracks already composed by some composers. Okay. And from some pretty popular or very high level um, video games in the past. So something like this, because it's soundtrack based on this album, isn't it? So um, mm -hmm. probably something like, uh, oh God, this is going to go good or bad. This, um, this could go bad. How about something like this? Okay, so this would describe me in one, because this, if I name this track, not only is it electronic, it's also slightly orchestral, it's also slightly cinematic. Okay. It was, orig it was a originally a Yasunori Mitsuna track from Chrono Cross. Mm -hmm. So I just got, I literally just had the MIDI file of the basic melody and I then constructed all the rest around it. So it's See? pretty much 90% what I've done. Maybe more, to be fair. But the original melody is obviously his, his hits. So that's how that is. And so it would be Corridors of Time. Corridors of Time. Okay. Then this one is uh, four minutes and 55 seconds. Yes. I'm going to so go always... on to it. Um, is there anything you want to talk about with this track? Yeah, well, it's, well, it sticks out a little bit because I always loved the track in the game itself, which was... Um... Chrono Trigger, sorry, not Chrono Cross. I got it confused there earlier, so I must correct that because I'm sure somebody will. It was Chrono Trigger, which was a Super Nintendo game. And I always loved the music in that game, especially on a console of that era, the sound it was capable of. And it had such a great melody, which is now kept in this version. And it's just something that I remember from when I was much, much younger. And I always wanted to be able to do it, but at that time and after, I wasn't capable. You know, I just didn't have the equipment and the knowledge at the time. So, what, was that your favourite um, uh, game at the time? It was one of many, I would say, but it stands it stands the test of time for me. So, it's one of like as a Japanese RPG, it's one of my favourite. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to give this a little play. We won't play it all. No, no, no. You don't know because you meant to buy it, people. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll play it now. Hopefully, it won't blow up my ears. I don't know if you'll be able to <laughs> hear it, but I'll give it a go. That's okay. So, Corridors of Time, people, by Dave Meredith. <laughs> okay, three, two, one, go. And we go. Playing for you, Charlie, and not for me. It, it is. Yeah, perfect.
And there we are. There we have it. I played. Oh, thank you very much. I played one minute and twenty seconds, and it's quite it's quite the instrumental, isn't it? Yes, that's why I quite like. It's, it kind of covers a lot of areas that I've learned over the years. So there's there's a there's, there's, a, there's quite there's a feeling of um, Chris Hughes back in there as well with the bass. Coming yeah, in there's there. the says some yeah. electronic bass, the drums are more modern, that type yeah. of thing. I don't want to get up. it just sat right for a drum track in one section and then it builds out to more orchestral, slightly cinematic later on, and then goes back. But the melody stays throughout, which was the melody that always attracted me when I was younger. So that's why that one stuck into mind, to be fair. But um again, like anything, different music, different people, isn't it? So have you got any other tracks that um are solely yours or you've done some partnerships with other musicians on there's the quite a few of those um good that's a <laughs> charlie you're oh god um i'm on the ball <laughs> i know well the thing is i'm you i've loved those collaborations and there's some that are not online so after those because there's no way of playing those right now so that's fine um if you're after anything vocal wise, does that interest you? There's some vocal collabs. Nah, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so, uh, so if, I only think because it's coming to mind as a recent one with. Um, okay, that's. With, a... Well, you might you may even know uh, with Scott Slater from over at MP3. So singer songwriter. Scott Slater. Yeah, Scott Slater. Yeah, got a good surname, Matt. So he's um, well, he's part. He, they won a um, BBC introducing thingy for Worcester, so they do a lot of gigs in that area. Oh, that's There's two good. of them. But, but I've known Scott for years, so um, we did a little track called I think it's the City, which would be quite a new one. So you'll see it as a single track on the website. Oh, is it in your um, new album? Yes. No, it's not on the album. That's the only thing because the album is literally all soundtracks. Sorry, people. Um, so I've, I've I've had to throw a spanner in the works. I'm afraid. Okay, and what? Where should I locate this? <laughs> so if yeah, <laughs> I've put, I've really done it now, haven't I? So if you is it on... out of that album? It's on Bandcamp, so it's all as as it was. Perfect. And you'll find it on the where it says more releases. I think you'll probably see it under more releases. And there should be it's a black cover with a guitar on fire on the front. Guitar, okay. Of course, the city. Yeah, so it's a sort of it's a sort of acoustic. But I added me some little bits of guitar and instrumental sort of light orchestra and things into this track. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about with this track? um it was a good one to do because it reminded me of the days when i used to do a lot of vocal clubs so um you've got scott sent me over what was at the time half finished track mm -hmm. and he said you know he sent me two to be honest and he said is there anything you, you think you can do with these to bring them bring them out more do a bit more with them and originally there was a the guitar track that he did because obviously he's a guitar player was um with a different guitar and then he re-recorded the guitar with a gibson guitar so it's got a much warmer sound and then i literally listened to it a few times i thought i like this 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 works for me and some light orchestration was added and um there was a few experiments here and there there was drums at one point and then i decided to take them out i thought it was better without so we had a you know discussion said yeah that's fine that worked for us so yeah that was but that's one of the most recent so it's a you know it's good recording quality and um yeah, it's a good master that one okay that's yeah quite a description now very a good bit long description really wasn't it to, no. <laughs> there's always people Go for no it. one's doing the no one... i will what i'll do i will play the the song and then I will get Dave back.
We should have Dave back right now. Charlie, we are back, my friend. We are back, and I played this song while Thank I was getting you on again. So I played. I'm so sorry about that. I played one minute and twenty of it. So yeah. If anyone wants, thank you very much. If anyone wants to listen to it or buy it, you should do because it's. It's really, it's really well played and sung, and um, quite pleasant. Yeah, Chill. it's it, quite. Um, it's it's very chilled. Yes, it's got a nice sort of melancholy vibe, hasn't it? It's very relaxing. And, um, like, dum, yeah, it's interesting. Dum, 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 <laughs> yeah. dum, dum. There he goes. Dum. There we go. And he said he would sing a look. I know. I I can't sing, people, so I won't put you through that. <laughs> So, are there any other songs that you were happy with? Um, no, you weren't ha um, happy with, but they turned out really good. There's interesting elements sometimes I mean, because, as you know, I've got so much tracks. I, I, I don't know. I've got a lot, and so my albums tend to have a lot of songs on them. Generally, I tend to, or a lot of tracks, I should say, because they're not always songs. So a lot of tracks, and. Um, there's a few. I mean, I do sometimes. I'll I'll get to an end. Of, so I've mastered one down. You know, like we all do. We listen a lot to our own work generally because other ears are always better. But you've still got to listen to your own sound to get your judgment of how you like it to be. That's what makes it all individual with what we do. Exactly. But, but it's not always easy because sometimes if you've been spending a lot of hours making music and you think, okay, I'm happy with that. And I, I tend to be not one of these people who comes back within a few days, listens again and goes, oh, I don't like it. It doesn't work like that for me, but I will sometimes get one or two people to listen and they might say, you know, the hi-hats are too loud or something. I go, okay, I didn't catch that because maybe I wasn't listening for it. I was listening more. I'm more of a melody person, so I probably wasn't <laughs> yeah. listening for it. And I'll go back in and I will, I will, and I will double check. But um, what I tend to find, Charlie, is I come back about six months later or a year later or three years later and then go, I can, I can do more of that now because you've learned more. Yeah. I tend to look at it like that, and sometimes I think, do I revisit or do I leave it and move on? That's the tricky bit. But then again, some tracks just have that magic that even though it, you, you're not quite happy with it, it t actually um, turns out really good. And if you mess, if you play with it even more, it will lose yes. it. It will lose its um. I don't That's know that feeling. Other... Yes, yeah, you know, you of course you all know that you've experienced that. It's. It's quite an interesting one because I have done that. I have gone a bit and put more instruments in, and I thought, you know what? I think I've just ruined that last section because it's now overkill. It sounded good at the time, and then when you go back and start again and listen to it, and you match the two together, you think, mm, now the mood's changed to the track. It was meant to be a sort of a, st a certain style to say slightly soft at a certain point, and then gets more sort of say slightly more cinematic, raises the tempo a bit, and then comes back, and then suddenly you think, ah. Now I've put so much stuff here, so many instruments that this now sounds a bit cluttered near the end, and it's lost that smooth feeling. That, like you've like book, overcomplicated it. it. Like yes, you make much, it overcomplicated. Yes, yeah, all clustered up into like a, a mashup of, I don't know, too much um, Sunday dinner. Yeah, <laughs> too much. You just want to sleep and leave it alone. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, you That's the beauty again. You regret it. <laughs> yeah, there is that. But luckily, you can delete them away. That's the beauty <laughs> of modern music, isn't it? You can just go, right, that file, out. That file, out. And you can go back again, which is great. But, um, yeah, but that's the issue I have because I don't do notation. 
I tend to always be able to remember what I've done if it's within a few days. But if I'm going back in and I can't leave a track too long, so if I come back to it later on and I've gone on to other tracks that are slightly different, you find that melody is to get it back how it was. You think, hang on a minute, because you come away from it. I haven't written, it's not written down. So exactly. I can't go back. So that is a problem. But then that's how I've, I love that on the fly approach. That's what I like. I go with the spontaneous of music. So you know, you just think, right, okay, this is what this is. It's working today. Everything's clicking. The keyboard's going well. My hands aren't they're, they're not cramping up. Everything's good. So let's get on with it. Yeah, no arthritis today. No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no aches yeah, and pain. No, no, no painkillers. The forty-year-old musicians. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> no aches and pains or arthritis. No. No aches and pains. Yeah, uh, no arthritis. Uh, and my memory's good today. I remember yeah. stuff. Memory's working. Yeah. For now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no need to, to take a you know, bring in a bottle of whiskey in the room just to keep right, you know, keep yourself stable when you're playing. It's all <laughs> straightforward. Not exactly. always though. Exactly. I normally get in, I normally get interrupted because now I've got obviously I've got a daughter, so she's quite young, so she will run in and that's it. Music time's over. Finishes just like that. That's it. That done. Freedom is gone, Charlie. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the freedom is gone. So I have to make that time when I can. But it's good. Yeah, it is what it is. And you you make ways. We do, don't you? People make you make it work somehow, which you is got, the beauty of it. You got it. You got it, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. You've got to. You've certainly got to. And you make the most of the music when you have actually have time. That's the plan. That's the plan. And I mean, or, I work. or you, you're like, I've got time now. This is great. And you're, you're on your keyboard and you're just staring yeah. at it. And nothing happens. Mm, what am I doing? Yes, exactly. My mind's gone. Yeah. <laughs> no ideas. And then you start and, playing and then three hours go and then it's all over. It's like, oh no. Uh, and it's time's like, gone. Like 10 you minutes. Nothing. 10, 10 minutes before like mayhem happens. Yeah, you've so got I know. you've got something in there. It's there. It's like, oh no, it's too late. Yeah, I've had that many times, many times. But where I find as I've got as we're talking age, as I've got older, is I find it much easier now to walk away. And if it, if it means I can't go, I don't go on it for six, eight, nine weeks, maybe more, two months, three months on the keyboard. Then so be it. I don't stress on it anymore. When I was younger, I used to almost do too much that you burn out. And you sort of come back and you, you're just doing ideas for the sake of it. And then you go back and play them and think, do you know what? Out of those eight, only two are actually worth pushing on with. Because you've just gone overboard. You're just too much. What I do with certain tracks that I don't like and I don't know what to do. With them, mm. I just say, I'm not doing it. I'm going to start a new track and leave it yeah. for like a month and then come back to it and think, oh, you know what? I've got something here. Yeah, good idea. So I, that's what you start doing. I think it teaches you that a little bit. But always, always give your music a rest and then go back to it and, and listen to it mm. again. Because I've done it many times that it sounds really good at the time. It's like, yeah. this is so yeah. good. I'm playing it over and over again. It's like, yeah, I like this. And then you listen to it, what, a week later and it sounds mm. like... And, it's changed. Yeah. That, and I don't know if that's... I was, I've like, always, I've, I was like, that's not what I did. No, and I struggle with that, Charlie, because I don't know if that's a music issue or whether it's us as musicians, whether we our mood's different on the other day. I think, I, I, I think I'm deluded, obviously. <laughs> but I've had it, though. I, do, I come away and I, I listen to a track that I thought was really good, and I've obviously put it on the social media sites where you can advertise, where I don't think most people care anyway, but there you go. I still do it. And then I come back, you got to, you got to put it out there. Someone's going to listen got to it. it. That's there are some lovely. I'll, 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 there are some lovely people. There really are, and I, that that yeah. doesn't change. Don't di don't diss yeah. your um, no, social media people. But you know, I th you know, you get the you know how it is. Social media. I think half the people probably don't even see the ad, uh, the the advertisement of a song because I the think way we it works get on people that just don't care and. There is, you're going to get that, and that's fine. It's life. It's fine. I don't. It's, I learned to deal with that a long, long time it's ago. It's fine. I'm fine with that. You know. So it's am I. I. It doesn't bother because I do it for me anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. See, yeah. I just do music for myself probably, because I enjoy then it. Then again, we probably ignore their posts as well. I'm right. sure we probably do because it's not time. on purpose, though. No, 
it's been busy, it's everything else, and it's if you could if you had the time, you'd listen to as much music as possible, I'm sure. Exactly. We just so you know, the time I do get is my own. Probably for them, them as well. They're probably just busy. Yeah, people. it is. I think and it's that's when you what get I always really think like they're just busy, Charlie. Yeah. They're just busy. That's why they're not listening to the, the just hard busy. work you put in yeah. to your music. Underneath it's the I've put hours into this. It's a great piece of music. They're, yeah, they're just busy. Don't worry. They're not ignoring me. They're just busy. They're <laughs> just busy. Or, you know. They're sick of seeing those four, day murder, song they're, they're too busy for four minutes. Yeah, too or, busy. Yeah. <laughs> sat down sat down the local pub having a beer, but too busy to listen to four minutes of music. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, yeah, but I, it, it's yeah, like I said, it's a joke. That sort of thing. It's fun for me, you know. It's if I if I if I like it, I listen to my own music. So people may think, well, it's crazy, but no, I love it. So I do it for me as well as anybody else who listens. That's how I've always looked at it. Exactly. I don't set out there. I'm not going to be a millionaire, and you know, it's all right place, right time. But I just, you know, I've, I've done something in my in quite a few years that I always doing say to stuff. yourself, I I want to be that way though. Even yeah. though it doesn't happen, at least you've yeah. tried, yeah? Yeah, I wanna, exactly. I want to be like Hans Zimmer or James Horner or um, yeah. Danny Elfman. Yeah, just aim you for it. Do it. Do even, if it matter, even if it doesn't matter, even if you're not good enough, at least you tried. I think I just look at it, just, just push. I keep progressing, pushing, progressing, and I'm sure you get it every so often. You feel like there's a breakthrough. I get that is sometimes you feel the break. I always feel changes. like it's always good to know someone that's slight, slightly better or their yes. career is better than yours. So mm -hmm. you can think, okay, that's how they did it. Maybe I can push myself a bit more. But, but that's the beauty of, again, of music, isn't it? You can, the more I, yeah, I always tend to find sort of six months, eight months in after, say, a previous album, say the recent one. So if I look to progress for another one, I, my aim straight away is to make it minimum as good. That's the minimum ask. If I can, better and more variety or whatever Whatever I find after listening a lot to the original one, I think, what can I do? Although I tend to put a lot of songs on or tracks on there, I should say. So that makes things tricky because I tend to do large size track lists. But um, Exactly. I, but I do find you reach certain points where something, there's like a breakthrough, something happens. It's hard to explain again, but you feel it. You feel, okay, my music's reached a different level on these couple of tracks. It's something that I've not done before. And you, you sense it. And then sometimes that gives you a lift then to have a change in what your next plan is for music. Well, listen to your tracks 10 years ago to now. And then you'll say, you know what? I have improved. Yeah. That's it. You, you definitely has. Yeah. I, you, I think everybody, you, you should really. And I guess... Generally, that's the same. You do your techniques change, the equipment changes, but my, I'm much more um, efficient and um, detailed in my mastering work now. See, in the past, I was restricted a little bit for that because I was recording through auxiliary, so there was no MIDI interface to use, so I couldn't use the real time sort of plugins and stuff. I had no option to any of those. It was literally whatever the keyboards gave me at the time was the options I had. You could use um, SoundForge used to yeah. be uh, mastering software, going back quite a few years, and do little bits in there. But now you see that opened a massive door, getting with the real-time MIDI connection. Well, it's like Audition, isn't it? That became yeah. the thing. There's, there's loads. There's so much choice now. This is the best thing about it for anybody, is that the amount of stuff you can do with a PC, a musical instrument, and USB interfaces is phenomenal. And what do and they... it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. No, and what do they compose? Chip music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Electronic music. You've got all the you... instruments in the world, and you, what do you do? Chip music. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's what it is. Or Sid. They don't do a lot of Sid, though. No, I mean, I've, I've, got, um, I've got a very, very good Sid plugin from, uh, well, you might know the guy, Mike Clark. So he's in Insidious, I think it's called. Uh, that's really good. I think yeah, this, that's a really good for, for yeah to get replicate that sound because I will use that sometimes with my own instrumentation. So you'll get the more modern electronic sounds, but still creep a little SID instrument in there somewhere to keep that slight retro feel. Yeah, which but, is yeah, this again is the balance, isn't it? People will say use the authentic uh, sort of sounds, but whatever you can get, as long as it sounds good. But that's the that's the beauty of it. In what we do, and um, well, I, I don't play violins. 
I don't play cellos. I don't know anybody that does. And so for me, I have to get the most accurate representation possible and try and make it sound as realistic as possible. Yes, I, like you said that you touched on earlier, people will spot that and go, well, it, I can, you know, it, it's not but it's, a real instrument. Exactly. It's all while having the VST tools, but it's how you mm. use them. People, yes. People don't know how to use the strings well mm. enough. You can manipulate things surprisingly deeply. You're people not going to get it. You're not going to get it perfect. Like, no. Real strings, violin, cello. No. But you can, no. Do, you can do your best. And, and there's nothing wrong in my eyes with even you know, taking a very good violin sound off a virtual instrument, but changing it so it's more electronic. Because at least you're being creative with something. You're not asking for it to be real. You're actually using it as a different type of instrument to, man to manipulate into something else to work with the piece of music you're doing. So you're not really intending it to be a violin. And I think that's, it's the freedom to do all that, which I think is the beauty of it. I like mixing instruments together that you wouldn't normally do and sort of come up with some mm. sort of weird sound. I kind yeah, of like a, that. Again, I like that. It's the that. beauty of creativity. You're limited by yourself, really, more than anything, aren't you? What you can do with the sound. Like you said, you it's don't all need, in the mind, you know, eh? Yes. So, and how you're feeling on the day, how yeah. much effort you're prepared to put in, and experimenting. Obviously, if your time's limited, it's not so easy. But if you've got a bit more time and you think, right, today I'm going to spend three or four hours, I'm going to manipulate these five sounds and see if I can make them into something slightly different. Exactly. So at least you can say no one else has got these because I've manip they're, they're stock sounds, but I've manipulated them to suit for me. So yeah. again, it's you've learned again straight away from that. You haven't just stolen some sounds and just just used, used them. Yeah. Because we've all done, I mean, I'm not saying you, but I've done that years and years ago because we all did at the start. It was just the basic element of how you try to do it. But it's the progress, which is the key, like simple things of manipulating a small sound. I remember yeah. remixing a Prodigy song. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Back, back on my, uh, pro, I think it was called Pro Tracker at the time. Yes. On DOS. Good old DOS. Oh, good old DOS as well. Yeah. Dear Charlie. How did it come out? I don't think I've ever heard this. Have you ever did it ever arrive online, or is this kept to you only? I'm. I've still got it on floppy disk. Have you really? Yeah. So it's so it'd be going back quite a way. So it's not. Been... So if I ever am famous, people, then the floppy disk is out there. Okay. Yeah. The holy. Oh, okay. The, the holy so grail. Know, is there no way? I mean, you, you may be more technical than me on this. Is there a way to? Can you not? Is there a way of exporting that to be? For you to have on like a modern mp3 type yeah you can or... you can get it exported to mp3 if you really wanted to. you can okay right so wow i didn't know that so you learn more the more you talk the more you learn as they say isn't it yeah it's just fine yeah. it's just finding it. the same with like certain trackers you can get like mod trackers that you yeah. use back in the day you can get a vst of that i wouldn't say okay. i don't know how good they are now but hmm. okay yeah well, see, it's interesting so much stuff there's well, so much you know i would stuff. recommend getting if people can't mm. afford like the trackers get buzz tracker i've heard that mentioned yeah you, i've heard that yes if you're good enough you can really experiment right okay you can give me some interesting things to think about because going forward but i used I that i used it a while ago i don't know how it is now you know how they get more commercial. <laughs> yeah, so I know things. they do. So yeah, that's and I think yeah, as I say, but I there's say a lot. Of, there's a lot of free software out there. Yes, there use. is. Don't always it's... go with Ableton or I don't know, no, 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 Pro no. Pro Tools. No, you've got to use what's right for you. Yeah, just practice. Practice doing a song. That's all yeah, it is. I, I believe you have to use what's right. I mean, like I said to you earlier on, because the, the production, the production will be, you know, will come later on. Of course, it does. That's the thing. Don't crowd yourself with too much at once. You know, start simple. Some people simple aren't good at that. Some people just aren't good at the production. They're, instant, side. they're good at the, the melody. The they're like the tune. You know, they're the yeah. Their yeah, skill is the well, tune. I've been like that, Charlie, myself. You see, I used to be, it's all about the melody. And, think, and then I'd worry about the mastering element later. And it was only, like I said, with the real-time MIDI stuff, then I started to realise, 
and I started to hear it in a different way because obviously the sound then is more spread, the stereo effects are better. And I thought, okay, these levels got to be tamed. There's it's clipping, and uh, you know, there's all these things then to bring into play. But I quite enjoy that. I used to hate that sort of part. I won't lie, I was a bit lazy on that front. But these, but now I quite enjoy it. I try, I want to try and get a balanced sound, so I know it's me. Do you see what I mean? You get your sound that suits your setup. Exactly. And that's kind of what you did with your latest album, isn't it? You've um, you've mixed a lot of genres, I I, I believe. Or... Yeah, it's a lot of electronic sort of. Uh, there's a couple of fully orchestral tracks as bonuses. Yeah. Again, orchestral, but virtual instrument orchestral. Um, there's a lot of electronic. There's a few sort of more sort of dance cinematic, and there's a few um, edgy electronic tracks. And I like the sort of slow tracks with a, a nice sort of lead melody that sort of dr drifts you away a little bit those sort of tracks yeah um i avoided i avoided guitar tracks this time um i think sometimes as much as i don't mind having a guitar solo or guitar parts on a track it can be if there's only one of those and you've got a big album with lots of electronic and that's the only one it can be a bit of a break you know if you're listening in a smooth pattern you suddenly get hit with a song with a, quite a lot of guitars it can throw you out a little bit as the listener yeah, you have to think sometimes from a listener's point of view what they you know, what how it pans through as an album. Exactly, and you've got twenty what twenty two tracks. I think there is twenty two. Yeah, I know twenty two tracks, and you can buy it digitally uh, for ten pounds. It is at the moment. Yes, there yeah. will be. Um... I'm just showing them it now, so people can go on to your. Um, no, that's fine. Your site. But don't forget, we've also got the um, the previous album which was intoxify has mr chris hughes back on it oh who is ed he was on the show a little while ago he has been on the show yeah and it was very nice of him to come on the show as well he's a nice guy i've had a few conversations with chris in messages he's, he's a nice chap yeah because yes most some of these guys, you know, not so much Chris and people like that, but some of the guys who've been around for quite a few years or people in a more, I say Chris is obviously famous for what he's done, but when you talk, when you go to mainstream sort of audiences and that, these, these like, people are... Like, if you don't know him from the Tarkin era, he did that uh, Star Wars sort of on... The, yes, that's on the it. NC, uh, was it um, uh, uh, he was on the... Um, GameCube uh, version. It was GameCube, and he was in, obviously he had the Tarkin music on the SNES and Think stuff. Think of Back, back to Five. Before. Yeah, this you know, Britain, he's just a nice guy. Generally, you know, he actually, some people they don't want to message with the like sort of people who haven't got to their their levels. But Chris isn't like that. He's one of a few I bumped into a very a very generous in conversation. Yeah, he's very which nice. is also nice. It's like we touched on again earlier, talking to the right people. Exactly. You know, being genuine as well, not trying to and not be, and sort of, not just people that have are up there that are no, in the no, industry. No. I mean, just anyone. In general. Because you never yeah. know. You might come up with something really good and unique. You never know. Exactly. It could be anybody. You've got to take the same approach to put it, you know, whether you're listening to someone who's just started out or a person who's you know, been longer than me or in between. It's all, it's for me, everybody's just, it's the same thing for me. So what's you the, know? what's the album with um, Chris Hughes, but that's the one before. It's, and, yeah, that's um, Intoxify, another electronic one. Okay. So I think I'm just getting the. the so that has a. I think there's a three. There's about there's three guests on. I sometimes I have a guest electronic artist on. You see, so people I've worked with over the years. And that was released and, um, March 20th last year, and you get yeah, I know roughly tw uh, 21. <laughs> yeah, I do. Large oh, amount of time, isn't it? And <laughs> it's only eight pounds, people. So go yeah. on to um, Dave's band camp and then you can get your own uh you, well you can get the album in fact yeah, go to on to dave's page and go on to each album and buy them all yeah make me a millionaire <laughs> make dave a millionaire because you're bound to yeah, find please. there's bound to be something that you'll enjoy so something for everyone i would say yeah, I would go along with that. If and they're not down the pub having a beer, though. Have a beer, probably... get drunk, and then later on, listen to Dave. Okay? Then listen to it, and then you'll probably think it's good. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's when you should sell your albums to pubs. Go to pubs yeah. and just say, 
can you have buy, a few drinks and they go can you buy this go on your phone and buy it and they'll they will do it there yeah. and then i said uh, um, yeah how many copies you bought uh, you've only put a zero uh 10 i think it is yeah i'll go you know what dave uh, i love you i'll go buy 100 copies <laughs> yeah that <laughs> you'll be my best friend i'll be down the pub every night <laughs> Well, if all your uh, social media people out there actually buy mm. the album, yeah. you'd be pretty well off. <laughs> Possibly. 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 As long as the other half doesn't take it into a runner, though. There's always that. that could I hope she doesn't watch. I hope she doesn't hear or watch any of it. No, she won't do it. She'll be like, <laughs> yes! <Yeah. laughs> Finally got rid of him. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so when does this album come out? I think you've said before. The new... uh, what the the indestructible design mm -hmm. that is out now. So that's already out. So it's that out one's now. out. That is out. So the one on Bandcamp that we played earlier is out. So indestructible design is out. And go on to um, that Bandcamp because that does help musicians out there. Yes, I will add that. I don't want to downcast anything, but Bandcamp really does help. The independent artists and the artists who don't have the backing of the majors so it is very helpful and that is again i'll keep bringing the guy's name up but mr chris Hughesbeck put me told me to do that he told me to go there well, he said because, he knows his stuff so he knows where yeah, to go he said you know you get because there's you know how the big corporates are they, you might get you, know. st you might get stiffed otherwise yeah <laughs> yeah you, and you won't get as much as you you should get like like streaming yeah. on youtube or mm. twitch or stuff you don't get a lot of money yeah it's very um let's just say i've seen some figures and not just of me i've seen figures of people who are are out there and have got a big name and it is not good for those people and so and it's I, i'm not one of them people i know it seems like one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sad really because the, the independent artists but i again i've always done my philosophy for this has always been no, but good, always on, been good on those people as well at least they did oh, it yeah. and they got what of they course. wanted of like, course it is it's, it's the individuality again it's yeah what exactly yeah i agree I, I always said a thing i i give my music generally away. for the most part it is free for the most part it's mm -hmm. quite over the years it's only since obviously i think i felt i reached the level where i think i could ask for a small amount of money and even every so often my and i, I don't get you know, it's you don't get the amounts back that do a great deal, but it's it gives an option, you know, and that's how I've, I've always done it. But I'll, I'm always happy to give. You know, there'll always be discounts all the time, and you know, after a while, I think I've some of my older albums on Bandcamp. Some of the soundtrack albums have been like four or five pound quite for quite some time now, and there's also eighteen twenty tracks on those. So maybe people will discover something today, and if they like something, that's great. That's absolutely great. You know, it's individual choice, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Which is the beauty of it. I will always create. So as long as there's keyboards, music, equipment to do it with, and I've still got some way of doing it, I will always be doing it. Yeah. Experiment with any so, any instrument you can. So if you're interviewing me in about, I don't know, and I'm 92, and we're still going strong, you may still see me. Welcome slowly. to yeah. the rabbit hole. <laughs> Oh. Uh, slow, there's probably one track a year by then not 22 track albums unfortunately but it may still be happening it could be <laughs> <laughs> but for now people that is the end of the show and i hope you all enjoyed it and is there anything else you want to say dave before yeah, we go? It's, it's, i'd just like to say it's been a pleasure charlie and thank you for asking me to come on it's been yeah. absolutely brilliant and to meet you finally in this form it's lovely absolutely brilliant and i'm, I'm normally in another form <laughs> yeah he's normally completely different yeah this is one of his many forms yeah i'm an alien um, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to you know people who've tuned in and people who watch listen and you know that's great and if you discover some new music that's brilliant as well and I hope you do. There's, yeah, there's stuff there, and I'm sure there's tracks people will enjoy. You just need to take a little bit of time. Uh, and one last time of the site to go on to see your. Uh, it's to see it's on Bandcamp. So, and the new album is in indestructible design. 
Great. And I will put a link in the description on That's YouTube. very kind. Thank you. And then we'll um and then people can go there or I'll threaten them. Okay? Yeah. We're phoning them. We're pesting you all with phone calls. We're gonna get your numbers and pester you all. But for now, people, that's it. That's it. Get out. Go on. Yeah. Go and do something else. Go do something else, all right? Yeah.